hey y'all so today we are back with another video today we are going to be talking about high porosity hair um i touched on low porosity hair and medium porosity hair but today we are going to do high porosity i wanted to wait to do the high porosity video so i can actually show y'all somebody with high porosity this is my client jasmine she's been coming to me for about two years almost two years um if I'm not mistaken, no, a year and a half, like a year and a half, yeah, she's been coming to me for like a year and a half, she has high porosity hair, if I can find a picture of what her hair looked like before, I will insert it, but her hair was like, basically just touching her shoulders, if that, um, she did just have a baby, she is experiencing a little bit of postpartum shedding right in her temple area, but it's not nothing too bad, but um, I just wanted to talk to y'all about high porosity hair. So y'all already know porosity. If you don't know, look at my last video too to explain some more on the low porosity and medium porosity side. But porosity is the hair's ability to retain moisture. Um, retain and keep moisture or whatever. So with high porosity hair, your cuticles are more open. Like the shingles on, on, your, on your cuticle... Well, the layers on your cuticle are a little bit more open as opposed to low porosity hair. They're a little bit more closed. So what that does is it allows moisture to come in, any and everything to come in, but it is hard to keep in, which is why most people have problems with dryness and stuff like that when it comes to high porosity hair because they don't know how to seal their cuticle correctly and use the right products in order to keep that moisture inside your hair. So, y'all should have seen when the what I sprayed, I sprayed a leave-in conditioner, 25 Miracle Milk, and that's because with high porosity hair, you always, I always, always, always use a leave-in conditioner no matter what, just to add that extra moisture because it is necessary in order to just insure, kind of like insurance. I use leave-in conditioner with almost everyone in the first place just depending on the health of their hair and what's going on and stuff like that but definitely on high porosity hair because it needs a little bit of extra love care and attention um now with low with high porosity hair um sometimes it may not have as much shine as you would see like low porosity hair or medium porosity hair but it can shine it can and it will shine as long as you hydrate it correctly as long as the moisture is in there and you have hydrated your hair correctly you should have some shine even when you're blow drying you should have some shine like you can see she has light reflecting from from her hair like she has light reflecting she has some shine on her hair even though she has high porosity hair and she has color on top of that so that matters y'all that really really matters now with that it may not have as much shine but it can still shine and then with the products the products that you use you want to use a little bit of heavier products so i use 25 miracle milk on on her with the leave-in conditioner but even if you used it's a 10 leave-in conditioner it'll still work perfect because me personally I have high porosity hair and I love it to 10. And then you guys can see where she's having a little bit of like um, breakage or whatever in her temple place, which is not that bad. Like it's really not that bad at all. But that is something to note. Um, postpartum could really affect your hair. She's about eight or nine months postpartum right now in this video if i'm not mistaken and her hair did grow a lot during pregnancy but her hair was already on a good track um and then she also like she also hasn't been to me in a while so for her to not have been to me in a while and her hair to be looking like this it's actually really 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 amazing and really great um now with high porosity hair i do put jasmine under the steamer i do put some of my high porosity clients under the steamer i may not do it all the time like it'll be a little less often than per se my low porosity clients just because the cuticle is already open in a way it's already more open than normal and what the steamer does is 
it opens your cuticle a little bit with the heat. That's what heat does in general. Opens the cuticle a little bit more so products can penetrate in. High porosity hair doesn't need that in a sense. The, the benefits from the steamer as far as high porosity hair would be elasticity, um, moisture retention, and things like that. So after, if I do do a steam treatment or if I do a regular sit under the dryer treatment with a cap, what then happens is once you go back to the bowl, you need to be rinsing that conditioner off with cool hair because that cool hair will help seal the cuticle. It will help smooth down that cuticle and seal it. And that's really, really important when you are dealing with high porosity hair to, or hair in general is to make sure you seal that cuticle because if you don't, bad, bad, bad things will happen. You want to be mindful of the heat that you use because you don't want to blow the cuticle off. Even with chemical products, you don't want to blow the cuticle off because you have less layers on the cuticle with high porosity hair. Now, I told y'all about the leave-in and then I also use some type of maybe like a product that has a little bit more silicone or like a little bit more oil-based once it's dry or like after I put the leave-in in. On the blow, um, after the blow dry, just in case the hair needs a little bit more love. Um, with Jasmine's hair, she has a four type four hair, and her density, she has like high density hair, and then also with her high density hair, her hair is a little bit more on the coarser side. So. As far as heat-wise, I use the highest temperature. I use 450. I use 450. That's non-negotiable. That is that is what works with her hair. But somebody who may have type 3 hair, type 3, 3B, 3C hair, and that has hair that's on the medium to finer side may not need that even though they have high porosity hair. So it really just depends on the person. Now, also, high porosity hair, it's a myth that it cannot grow long high porosity hair can grow long but you have to stay on top of your routine especially with high porosity hair because it can get drier quicker it can break off and snap that way so you want to make sure your routine your hair routine for high porosity hair is of the utmost importance which is why because we are on our routine and we were on our routine even before she took her mini hiatus and stuff like that her hair is still healthy it could we we still have some ways to go just because she wasn't there for a while but her hair is still healthy so with that um your hair can grow long with high porosity hair like it really can and then genetics i told y'all genetics play a factor in it too and stuff like that but if you have the genetics for it, if it is your hair is capable, your hair can grow with high porosity hair. It just takes time. It takes consistency. It takes effort from both the stylist and the client. Now, as far as her color, because her color has been there since maybe her second appointment with me. And um, just with color too and high porosity hair, you want to be careful. You don't formulate on high porosity hair like you would formulate on low porosity hair because high porosity hair, like we talked, like I said earlier, it takes everything in. So you may not need a 30 developer. You could get away with a 10 developer or a 5 developer and let it be slow and steady. Fast and instant does not win the race. Slow and steady wins the race, especially if you're applying color on high porosity hair because you will blow the cuticle off, you will damage their hair, it will be gummy, it will break off. You do not want that whatsoever. The products you want to you wanna use, you want to use heavier products with high porosity hair. Um, you want to use products that are a little more thick and creamy in consistency. Of course, water-based. Um, the water is as the ingredient is important, but it, you want it to be a little bit more thick and creamy so it can sit and have time to penetrate and also coat, especially when you go ahead and rinse it out because you want to make sure what you put in stays. So something that could stick and coat the hair a little bit to get that shine because as y'all can see, her hair is still shining. Her hair is not dull in any way, shape, or form. 
It is straight. It is flowy. It is doing what it needs to be done. It does need a trim, but other than that, it's perfectly fine. And that's the other thing with high porosity hair, depending on your hair type, um, depending on like your density and your and your coarseness and stuff like that. High porosity hair sometimes what I've noticed with my clients sometimes needs to be trimmed a little bit more frequently for the simple fact that it gets dried out quicker and because the cuti- the layers of the cuticle are so spread out and it's so far few in between, um, naturally that ends up being what happens as far as what I notice with my clients and things like that. But other than that, if you follow all those steps and you're good, you should be on your way to a good regimen with with high porosity hair. And then also, too, what I like to do sometimes, depending, I didn't show it in this video just because y'all always see the blow dry. And I know y'all probably be sick and tired of seeing me blow dry people hair. A cool shock. A cool shock just to ensure you seal stuff in will go a long, long, long way. And here y'all see I am about to go ahead and trim her hair i'm adjusting the camera i don't know why i didn't cut this part out please bear with me y'all please please bear with me because clearly i didn't know what i was doing um <laughs> clearly i didn't know what i was doing but i'm about to go around and trim you see it's not like her hair isn't too bad like it's not too bad in any way, shape, or form. Her hair is pretty it's pretty good for how long she hasn't been to the shop. Her hair is pretty good. So she probably needs like a inch. Yeah, like an inch at most taken off. And then I go in. Her hair is in one length. Her hair is in layers. Her hair has always been in layers since she came to me. You go in and trim, getting that regimen together. I go around like that and I bring it out and I over direct a little bit I take it off like that and then I go in at the bottom and y'all know I freehand cut at the bottom most of the time depending on how long the hair is how it's falling and stuff like that you go in and freehand cut especially because she has she is going through a little bit of postpartum shedding and she does have she still has that old color on her ends and, and things like that her trims are essential her trends are necessary for the health of her hair but as you can see we have that beautiful shine we getting her ends together and then by the time she leaves she will be a-okay and i hope you guys enjoyed my little rant session about high porosity hair if you have any more questions comments or concerns feel free to put them in the comments let me know what y'all want to see what else y'all want to learn about because i have a whole lot more stuff to say because y'all know i like to run my mouth and yeah i will see y'all in the next video just enjoy the rest of this I, 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 Is it still on that bullshit? Is that why you calling me? Cause you need that good dick. You know better than a talk shit. I pull up with that full clip. Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing changed. You ain't talked in a minute. Still all up in your feelings. Still need sex. You were healing. I got it waiting right here, right here. your mind just in case you need a reminder oh just in case you need a good time ain't talk in a minute still all up in your feelings still need sex to a healing i got it waiting right here right here
look, I know girls love Beyonce. Girls love to fuck with your conscience. Girls say when them kids go missing. And shoddy, you ain't no different. These days it's hard to meet women. Feel like my love life is finished. I've been avoiding commitment. That's why I'm in this position. I'm scared to let somebody in on this. No new friends, no, no, no. You know how this shit goes. You got your fair share of admirers that call your phone. You try to act like it's just me, but I am not alone. But if you're alone, then say my name, say my name. You know what is around you. Say maybe I love you. You and every day. Say my name, say my name. You have to kind of shake it. Baby, I have to sort of change. Say my name. saying no new friends no 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 you know how this shit goes this is not four years ago time escapes me now forget how it felt when this shit moves slow i come through and whips that make the young boy take the long way home all my young boys around me saying get money and fuck these hoes where we learn these values i do not know what to tell you i'm just trying to find a reason not to go out every evening i need someone that will help me think of someone besides myself i need someone i'll leave the front door with you don't want to hide no more cause you're not shy no more neither of us want to play the size no more no i'm not alone even though nothing was the same let me get your ass alone let me make you say my name say my name say my name say my name you know what is around If I ever see you again, I promise I'll be